continue. Okay. We're all set. All right, so we can call this meeting to order. At, at 6.03 p.m. 6.03 p.m. it is. All right. Um, so did people get a chance to look at the, the me meeting minutes from last month? Yes. And yes. Are, are there any changes? Guess what? I have no comments. All right. <laughs> I have nothing to say. <laughs> you know, good to me. And I move to accept. All right. Well, somebody has to make. Are you gonna make a motion first, or are we good? Well, Yusuf did. He did. Does that so count? Dead. Yeah. That I seconded it. Is let's, so the vote is everyone. In favor. Yay. All in favor. Aye. Uh, Aye. Unanimous. Ten minutes saved. Oh, yeah, really, boom. We're going to move through this quickly, I think, tonight. Uh, public comment. There are no attendees, so that means uh, at this time we don't have any public comment. If someone should come in, um, we can amend this and have them uh, come into the agenda if everyone is in agreement with that. And. Mm -hmm. So then we will move forward. And again, I'm going to put Sarah on the spot. Uh, but first of all, we have to re we have to take a vote tonight to reappoint Sarah. <laughs> so we can put that into the minutes. So yes, it one... struck, struck fear into my heart. I mean, <laughs> I'm supposed to chair the first meeting tomorrow. I hope. Yes, this is I exciting. So. Sarah is going <laughs> to be the chair. So uh, we just have to officially, and I'll let Meg make the uh, motion. Uh, uh, reappoint her to the um, Community Preservation Act Committee. All right, so I move to reappoint Sarah to the CPAC. Any second? A second. All in favor? I get the vote. Unanimous. All in favor? Unanimous. <laughs> Who seconded? I'm sorry. I did. Uh, Becky. Okay, thank you, Becky. Mm -hmm. I did. I took my eyes off the screen. Second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Likely. Excuse. Can I say the only update I can give is that yeah. we, ha we haven't met, but I and the town manager and the residents advisory committee interviewed candidates for the for Nate's position, the um, at large seat. And I believe the town manager will appoint somebody. The planning board also has to appoint a new representative, um, but I'll be surprised if those seats are filled by tomorrow night. So, but our work is just beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the total number of seats on the uh, committee? Nine. Nine. And so how many, so we have- So there are five. There's historical commission, uh, housing authority, Conservation Commission, an LSSE, and Planning Board. And then there are four at-large seats. Okay. Okay, good. Um, so it, it yeah. sounds to me like they are still interviewing. So again, if anyone is interested, I would encourage you to apply. I know, Becky, you had to express some. Yeah, I thought we were going to connect before I put in my application, but I did work on my application. Okay. So. I'm, I'm just going to submit it. I wanted to just touch base with you after the meeting and then I'll submit it. Okay. Oh, awesome. Because I'm not sure they've made a decision yet. Oh, okay. I could right. be wrong. Well, great. Um, and it, it's a little confusing. I'm not sure if seats will be, I'm not sure if the list, the membership list on the website is up to date or not. It might be that others are going off. I don't know. So if you're interested, just put your CAF in. And if you explicitly mention CPA committee, then you will definitely get interviewed. Great. Okay. Thank you. Uh, str uh, strategic plan next steps. So at this point, I wanted you, if you, hopefully you all have your calendars. I'm trying to come up with a date that we can schedule to meet with the um, together 
as, as a committee again with, you know, so staff members, commission members to sort of hammer out our priorities for next year. I think at the last commission meeting, we talked about uh, certainly the name change being one of the top priorities. Um, so we, the other part of this is I'd like to establish a subcommittee that really focuses on the marketing end of this. And I know that Yousef has um, volunteered to um, help from, you know, the commission. Uh, this is, uh, you know, it's not in a, I, I'm not sure we have to vote on this, but I'd look if there's anyone else interested in volunteering, that would be great. I think two people from the commission probably two people and myself, uh, two staff members and myself. And I'm not foreseeing a lot of meetings uh, because I think we have some, you know, some really talented individuals and we, you know, who know about marketing and, and how possibly we can proceed uh, on this. The, there is a little caveat here. The move is not happening as quickly as, well, I kind of anticipated anyways, but it's, it's not happening as quickly as I would hope back to the bank center. So I think that we should probably proceed um, with the name change before we do, you know, and not wait on the move and hopefully get that underway this fall. So we can then veil it um, maybe around the first of the year or so, but that depends on what the committee subcommittee decides. How does that sound to people? Sounds good. I would be willing to do that. Mm-hmm. Anyone else? Or like call me in. Meg and Becky. <laughs> oh, you oh. all would. <laughs> <laughs> maybe what we could do is. Well, maybe uh, we just. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, I'm gonna have our marketing guru take the lead on this. What do you think, Yusef? Do you think we could just bring as many people as whoever yeah. wants to be involved in this? Why not? You know, especially if the time people get busy, so that way, even if we don't have everybody, it'll be a good group. But I think maybe if we do like the name change, announce it sometime mid fall, and then when the move happens, we like introduce the logo or something like that. So that'll give us kind of a phased mm -hmm. approach to it. Barb, I I will not volunteer for that one. <laughs> I understand. You're you okay. will have your plate full. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, that sounds good then, because uh, yeah, I think there may be more than one or two also on the staff who might be interested in being a part of this. So we'll, we'll just, we'll do that. That sounds great. Um, so is there a date that I wanna start with you guys first that is better toward, let's see, I'm just looking at my calendar over here. I go off screen. Uh, maybe the week of the 20th of September? I can do any day except the 22nd. Any day but the 22nd? And pretty much that's my entire month. It's just, I have jury duty. So I don't know what that's going to lead to. All right. Well, I imagine it'd be an evening meeting, six o'clock. Yeah. Like this. I, I just, I, every time I get jury duty, I end up on cases. So. Wow. <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. <laughs> I that's hard. That's hard work. What is it, the 23rd? Uh, uh, the 23rd? Do I hear that? That's a Wednesday. Yeah. That works for me. All right. Uh, I'm checking my schedule. That doesn't work for me. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's, let's do another one. I can do Tuesday. What works for you, uh, Victor? Tuesday works. Uh, Tuesday, what time? Tuesday doesn't work for uh, Meg. Yeah. Okay. Oh. It's the one day I can't do that week. Doesn't work for me either. How about the Monday, Thursday? Monday or Thursday? Twenty first or the twenty fourth? Thursday. Monday is the golf tournament for the chamber, so I'll be busy. Thursday. Thursday. Oh, Monday's no good. Yeah, we're we're busy. So twenty fourth. We aren't going once. Sounds good. Going twice. Sold. So sounds good. Mm -hmm. What time? Fourth, uh, six p.m. Is that that okay, works? Folks? All right. So I will let the staff know that's happening. Awesome. Thank you. Um, boom, boom, boom. So that will be the the meeting of all of us, and then from there, probably Yusuf. I'm thinking like the first week of October, we pull together the other group. 
Yeah. So that this will be the big meeting, and then we'll we'll we'll, we'll do the um, subcommittee meetings later. Does that work? Sound good? Okay. Yep. Good. Uh, will, you, will you reach out to Stephanie and see if she's interested in? Thank you for reminding me of that. I will. Either of these? Yeah. Any. Just making a note. And subcommittee. Okay. All righty then. All right, that brings us right up. Well, we are moving very quickly tonight. Any any more comments um, about the strategic plan? I think yeah. Now it's just now the work is ahead of us and taking those goals and making them a reality. It's kind of exciting. I'm, oh. I'm very excited. All right. So quickly, the coming up next is the director's report. Um, Grab the right piece of paper. Um, I'll start with sports. What's happening in the fall? Uh, believe it or not, we have actually two, three, four, five, six, seven different um, programs, sports programs coming up. In addition to what's happening at the golf tournament, at uh, the golf tournament, at the, you've got my, Yusef, you got me on the golf tournament again. Um, in addition, what's happening um, with the golf course? Uh, but uh, so we have Amherst Youth Football, the co-ed, uh, non-contact. We're having clinics for, for second through eighth graders, non-contact, obviously I said that. Ace Tennis Instruction, the Ultimate Skills Clinic, um, that, that is happening, that actually starts tomorrow. Youth Cross Country, um, we have a group, SM, uh, the Sugarloaf Mountain Athletic Club Track Clinic, That'll be happening, and we have a group, and I'm not sure, Meg, maybe you know what this stands for, NESC Junior oh, Soccer. soccer. Yeah. yeah. So that's happened for K through sixth graders. And then a new pro program called Girls on the Run for third through fifth graders that uh, we'll be hosting ourselves. So it's, uh, this is great, a lot of good stuff. Nick's, Nick's got a, done an ex outstanding job pulling this together, and uh, uh, we we just have a lot, a lot going on. So this is great in the sports world. Um, in addition to all his multiple shifts at the golf course, uh, the field, as far as fields and facilities, the Kofax League is, I think, winding down now. And however, the fall ball for the for the um, um, little league is happening. The, I was out just recently over at Mill River. And um, to be honest with you, the fields uh, are looking a little tattered. I kind of feel bad about that because I know they they put a lot of money in and, and um, volunteered a lot of, of man hours and woman hours to um, to make those fields much, much better. So hopefully they can get them back into shape. Uh, but they said that, that that program is going to um, start on sort of a you know, mostly clinics and things like that. So that's good. Uh, aquatic, yeah, questions. And just yeah, chime right. in anytime, please. Okay. Uh, is the drought ca causing the difficulty uh, on the field? I mean, is it be honest with you, I think, I think the issue was that the, the um, DPW would have gotten in there at least a mill, but they have a lock on that field that DPW doesn't have a key to. And then it was quite <laughs> overgrown. And I think we also, oh, okay. I think different parents have come on board, you know, different yeah. rates of enthusiasm. This happens, it kind of cycles. And uh, unfortunately, um, it just seems not to have been um, cared for. And that, that field, those two fields are generally taken care of by uh, the associations. It, is it really proper that they have, <laughs> that they can fence, they can lock it off to? No, I think DPW is working on that with them. Okay. Yeah, they were they were it surprised. Is, yeah, all right. They may have done it to keep dog walkers off there without realizing that that's also keeping maintenance workers from uh, helping okay. out. All right. Okay, aquatics. Uh, Grot Park, a little stumbling block, uh, was closed this past weekend, much to my um, chagrin. 
I didn't know about it until later, unfortunately. So we had actually planned to have staff member up there over the long holiday weekend, and we were going to do conduct some surveys. Uh, that person was going to do that. So those weren't we weren't able to do, but apparently there was some sort of a mechanical issue, and I haven't yet been informed whether or not that has been resolved. Hopefully that will be taken care of soon, and it is scheduled to stay open until the 27th, just like the pool at uh, Mill River. So um, I'm hoping that we hear good news, and it's nothing too serious uh, as we move forward. Uh, but I know the kids that I saw using it when I was up there and it was working, just loved it. Uh, things were going really well and, and people were just so enthusiastic and happy to have that as a resource and it's just fabulous. So, and uh, we'll, we'll, I'll keep you informed as to where we are with um, the status of that. The folks at the outdoor pool at Mill River are exceedingly happy that we're still able to continue keeping that open until through the 27th. Uh, I've just heard lots and lots of good positive feedback and you know we're just giving the community something to do and you know there's a physical fitness certainly component to that especially for the lap swimmers who utilize the facility but every it, it's basically full all the time all the slots are pretty much full. Of course you know the weather is cooling down that may change a little bit but uh, so far it has been um, remarkably popular which is great and um, we've been able to staff it based largely on the fact that schools are opening later i'm not sure we would be able to do that if that wasn't the case so uh, um, we will continue doing what we're doing um, we're also monitoring continue to monitoring the social distancing there the um on the on the deck in the pool and the deck house and uh, people still for the most part, everyone has come with positive comments about how safe they feel at the facility, which is excellent. We're still looking at ways and um, just begun the process really of exploring ways we could possibly use the middle school pool uh, during the pandemic and the school of course is, uh, I'm sure very protective of their the, keeping their space secure. So. Um, we will see what happens. It'd be great at least if we could offer open swim in the weekends, um, but we, we'll see. And all of that is contingent on what phase we are in the um, governor's um, sort of regulations as well. Becky. I was going to say the, the phase one reopening does not have students in the middle school. It has phase one students going to the high school. Mm -hmm. So that will buy like some time when no one's actually using the building for learning. And mm -hmm. with the polling actually went really, really well within the building, the buildings on election day. That was what the superintendent said during his school committee update. Mm -hmm. So there might be room for that negotiation for until at least phase two, which is November. Could you expand on that in terms of being went well, like what the cleanup afterwards? Yeah, the, the, the town had a protocol for cleanup mm -hmm. afterward. And um, it the superintendent's update was that it went really smoothly and like they had no issues kind of yeah. thing. And there is projected to be classes the day after the next voting cycle, which will be in school. So if, mm -hmm you know, if metrics, you know, are within the projections, then students would return the day after voting, which means that maybe some of those concerns around excess people in the building after the fact will have been addressed. Uh-huh. Very good. Thank you. Any other questions around aquatics? All right. So let's move to the golf course. Really exciting news, actually. Um, play has been incredibly brisk. I <laughs> know uh, um, we we brought in um, almost close to thirty-eight thousand dollars in revenue in August, which is unheard of. Uh, we haven't. I can't remember when we've had brought in that much revenue. And that's you know where we're not doing our pro shop um, at the way we normally would. Our beer and wine sales are not quite, when it's not in front of you, sometimes they don't think about it. They're more apt to unfortunately bring their own in, which they're not supposed to, but. Um, so that is mostly golf and carts, which is pretty incredible. 
Uh, so we're hoping that that trend continues. Certainly a lot of that is driven by the student population. And with the student population and different and lots of beginners, we have, we've seen, you know, we've had some challenges on the course, but uh, John's been able to address, address those um, as, as they come up in terms of, you know, if there's damage or other incidents that happen there. But for the most part, uh, I think it's, it's been terrific. And um, it's a really, it just shows, you know, it's, it, that we're able to provide a resource for people, a uh, recreational resource, and um, it is being taken advantage of by lots and lots of folks. So that's great. A lot of new faces up there, a lot of new golfers. And so that's really exciting. Um, Yusuf, did you have, I know you golf a lot there, so I'm sure you wish it was more. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'd get in trouble. Uh, <laughs> no, but uh, it's it's definitely you know obviously the weather didn't cooperate you know as for the actual health of you know the grass and stuff like that. But you know right now it's back. You know it's kind of looking very happy now. So after aerating, actually helped a lot too with the greens. And mm -hmm. um, you know it was good. Well, you could tell the difference when when you were able to get more people to work with John. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so I think it's it's good. Um, I'm wondering, is the cart usage a lot more as a percentage now that people are supposed to be one in a cart? Um, I'll have to look at that more closely, to be honest with you. I'd like to compare it to other years. I'm not sure. I would think, you know, just from an anecdotal, you know, it, it seems like there are a lot more carts being used. When I yeah. come up, there's few in the corral on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, definitely. I mean, this past weekend, we were straight out and there was a point where carts just weren't available because they were all out. Yeah, no, I, I think it looks good. And, you know, I think it's just, uh, I wish there was a way and, and maybe now with Nick having his first season under his belt, you know, we can, um, you know, I know of a couple of people that would be willing to help on, a, on like an ex officio kind of committee, mm -hmm. you know, to try to help them out and, and do different things and maybe bring in more beer sales, have people hang out more and, Right. Do, uh, find out other ways of to get some income. So, well, it's part of the it's part of the big picture: beer and and wine and and other snacks and and what have you. There, it's just a typical well, golf course operation. Wouldn't wouldn't the state laws about or guidelines about no bars? You have to have real food. You can't just serve alcohol and snacks, right? But well, we'll have to look into that. Yeah, but I'm. I mean, you know, but other places are finding a way around it, you know. Yeah. So I think no. we need to make the money when we can, and this is one of the only things that we do that brings money. <laughs> we, we do offer, um, you know, we have hot dogs and we have other snacks, so we, I think we've covered that pretty well. Okay. Um, I think if, if we have people helping and working, you know, we can do more hot dogs and burgers or whatever. You can have a grill up here. So the, you know, yeah. that's the part of the you know the thing that we can explore a little bit more and figure yeah. out how to do that. All right, and we're not a traditional bar at all. And it's kept in it's it's a single serve kind of operation, so it's a little different than. It's not a bar. <laughs> I just want to okay. make that clear. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, we're, we're licensed. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I would say there's something else I, I want to just add on to what you have said is like part of um, the goals and objectives this year for the the towns budget and whatnot, that whole process, was to appoint an advisory committee and to look at operations. So, you know, Yusef, and if anyone else is interested in helping on that committee, we'll probably pull that together in November. So let me know, or let Yusef know if you're interested in, the two of us now are put our heads together and, and put together a committee of you know, there, there are a lot of good business people out there. Certainly there's a lot of expertise at the university. And within our membership, I have, we have some really capable people. Yes. Um, Sarah, sorry. There were those fellows, or maybe it was one fellow, came about a year ago, hoping to expand the entertainment options there. Would, I don't know if he's around. I don't remember who it was. And Jay, the, for the, for the show? No, this was- No, no, yeah. no, no, for the clubhouse. For oh, yeah, yeah, clubhouse. yeah. yeah change i'm not I mean, sure he was where. really pushing to make it a you know money maker and yeah i'm not sure what happened to him honestly i i haven't spoken to him since i think at least since he said he was going to do that but then 
Yeah, so I don't know what's happened, but well, I mean, I think but he might be one to include in the group. Contact if he is still interested, because right. I think he was looking for some support from us to move forward with any changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I have his information. I don't have it handy, but I know who you're talking about. Yeah, he had, he was one of the gave one of the citizens uh, proposals for the capital planning group uh, and. Uh, was it? Yeah, capital group. But anyways, yep. Well, thank you. We can follow up with him. I'm just trying to remember his last name, but it's not coming. All right. Um, so this is under after school, but it's really childcare. <laughs> so some interesting developments have happened, and quite frankly, I'm I'm not really caught up on everything. Hopefully by next week I'll have more information in writing from the state. I don't have it now. But um, let's see, I think it was Thursday, the state came out with a, a, a new um, kind of relaxation of uh, childcare for municipalities. That in fact, municipalities could provide childcare in a different way that it wasn't um, overseen by EEC, which is the state entity that oversees our school age uh, program but by local authorities. So it would be much like how we run our, our day camp. So we're, we're sort of investigating this. Uh, the schools have approached uh, me asking um, if LSSC would provide a daycare at the middle school, but they want to do it with all of the three different after school programs at one site. I see your face, Becky, yeah. And my first reaction was much like your reaction, Becky. It just doesn't make any sense. They had, they have between 17 and 30 families right now who are interested. These would be members. These would be children of staff members from the school, and certainly there would be staff members from the town. So those would be your first two priorities. And I'm not sure if they anticipate opening up to the public or not. I, I don't think so, though. So and then it becomes we would be running three programs for 10 kids each. And I'm not sure how that would work. So I'm, I'm confused, um, I'm concerned. It doesn't, it, just, it doesn't make sense to me, but uh, maybe I'm missing something. So I'll, I, uh, I know that Marta Rivera had, uh, tried to reach me today I, and we're playing phone tag. So I will try to follow up with her in the morning and uh, just investigate this a little more. But I could see us instead, uh, based on the relaxation of um, sort of the regulations, in, in childcare regulations, and possibly our ability to provide childcare at a different site, a town-owned site, let's say, um, either the library, the banks, I'm not sure where that would be. That's still up for discussion. That's not, you know, nothing cut in stone or anything here. Or just at this point, sort of brainstorming how this might work. But I think it would be better if we just kind of went and did our own program versus trying to do it with two nonprofits who would run separate programs in addition to ours at the middle school. So I'll leave it at there. And now I'm open for questions and comments. I just, I had one. So is this the same program that you were talking about at the last meeting that could potentially be at Crocker Firm? Right. Okay. And now they so now they want to do it at the middle school. school. Correct. And now, With all now, of them. I, now that I hear what Becky said about them not having any students there, I sort of get where they're going there. But I just don't see three of us all competing for the same kids. It's just not working for me. Yep. I got a question. Is this is this just for, is this just for uh, top? Town of Amherst employees? Uh, I believe, and again, I haven't had the discussion yet with Martha Gravera, but the, initially that was the plan. It would just be for um, staff members from the schools and staff members from the town's children's children. Sarah? Okay. So then um, is there anything for the residents? Right. Well, that's what, that's my concern. Yeah. Because I, I I could use I could use it. You know? Yeah, I'm sure we can fill it. In our <laughs> and if yeah. it's and if it's a, if it's a town town program, you know, I think it should include residents. Mm -hmm. 
I agree. So, I would yeah, agree. I, I'd like to see it expanded myself. Right. I'll I don't know it. how you just, I mean, I would be interested to hear what is the justification for using town resources specifically for town employees. You know, I understand the need, but as Victor says, it's uh, there are a lot of people who, who desperately need it. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I, so I know you don't know much, but don't I don't have that clearly we're curious about <laughs> that's good I'm glad I, I feel like I'm sensing the same sort of concerns I have yep Becky my understanding as a staff person is that only staff who had um children in school like k through six who um were being asked to return to the building but did not have um, their kit, like could not say they could return to the building because that they, they did not have childcare because the school that their child would attend was not in person in a mm -hmm. way that would allow them to work, which is why the district looked at it. Mm -hmm. Do you have any, um, have you heard anything as to the rationale of having all three of the different providers be at the middle school? That, that you saying it two minutes ago is the first I've heard of that. Okay. And I it kind of goes against the blending of different groups of kids. So I don't know if they're anticipating a survey just closed on Friday requesting child care, or the deadline was like Friday to request mm -hmm. child care if you were going to be returning to school. Um, so I don't know if that was the reason for three or that like I'm not entirely certain I know that the survey closed on I think it was Friday afternoon okay, okay. yeah the person the individual I talked to is his name is Dane Dwayne Shamble and he mm -hmm. works for Marta both of you know they do the um outside of school I forget the official title out of time out of time program there so um I was you know I voiced my concerns and then um he said that that Marta would be calling me. So we'll have that discussion hopefully tomorrow morning. And I'll also have a discussion with the town manager um, tomorrow morning as well. So, all right. So I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. You, I mean, does anyone have a different feeling that we should be with the other two providers at the middle school? No, or any I other? I don't really have any objections. Oh. I just have questions. So sure, go ahead. I just learn more. Yeah. I think we need to we need a little more information. That's a, a lot more information. That's for sure. Yeah. I could say it's really like this is such a huge need right now, and um, but and I think we're well situated after you know holding the aquatics program. I, you know we're not through yet, but we were very successful with that. You know we know we know how to put our protocols down, how to follow them, um, and we've been we've been you know really vigilant and conscientious about um, making sure we have a safe space um, for folks um, to recreate and certainly child care falls under our our previ so hopefully we can pull something together for the community any other questions all right um, just a few items related to adult and youth education it looks like we'll be continuing our online presence. So doing a variety of different programs that we'll have in terms of virtual programming for kids. But um, right now we're the only program that we'll be doing, it will, it's actually a Zoom type program, is called Real World Math for middle school and high school age kids. And, um, <clears throat> and outdoors for adults, we'll be viewing the, the Kijong and the yoga again. And those have both been very um, popular with adults outside in, 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 and again, but weather dependent, uh, uh, but um, has been, have been extremely well received by the community. Next is special events. So we've got Halloween coming up. Um, we're working with the BID and the Amherst Chamber right now to, um, to come up with some sort of programming for uh, Halloween for kids. Um, we have a couple of ideas that we're sort of, you know, kind of percolating. One would be um, there 
um, a trick or treat my ride Halloween car parade. Mm. So a contest around, you know, families decorating their cars, kids in the cars, kind of themed out and whatever that, that car looks like or however they want to present. Uh, so we'd have a, a parade and at the end we would hand out packaged, you know, things for, for kids. Um, the trick or treating, uh, I noticed some communities have already put out the word that they are not going to allow trick or treating. I I'm not sure what Amherst is going to do, but, um, and there may be something from the state, I don't know, around that. So we're, we're looking at, you know, just different ways to, to have some fun. Certainly the, the, uh, uh, the, the painting of the Halloween windows that we've done is something we think we can definitely pull off again uh, for the different businesses. And uh, I think the chamber is excited to be part of that again and the bid. And, um, and, then the, and then doing a program around masking, you know, maybe a contest and, you know, have kids involved like yeah, online, they could show us their masks or take pictures and, I, it would just be really fun. So, so Nikki is working on that with me, and and uh, we'll have something to to put put forward and and happen in um, when the Halloween, what the end of end of October. So, fun. Yeah. Any ideas? Questions? Yeah, yeah. Jack o' lantern contest. People could bring them, stick them on the common. They, you know, it'll be yeah, dark. Thanks. You know, you carve it at home. Sure. Let me you write. Know, you awesome. could you could write a number like if it were a contest, you could write your last name on the back of it. But light yeah. them up and stick them. Good idea. Put around the common. Mm -hmm. See who can grow the like biggest. The luminaria. <laughs> what was that? I'm sorry, Victor. Who can what? grow the biggest pumpkin? Oh, <laughs> biggest pumpkin. You know. My my only concern with the trick my ride thing, which I love in part, but that that is only available to people who have a car. So sure. I want to find a way where other people could be involved. Hmm. Um, and I wonder if we could like, I, I would love to think of a way that we could be more inclusive of people who don't have their own transportation. Um, I want like, Maybe we could encourage what? School bus. I was thinking bus. something like that. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure that would fly, but I was trying to think like I wonder if we could have materials to like make scarecrows and like like there there's ways that we could involve the community without making it dependent on a car or like trick your stroller kind of thing or you know, a bike kind of thing where do that i think we were just trying to figure out a way to still have sort of a parade like we've had the kids love that but yeah that's tricky but what if we did have a couple of buses for kids that didn't have cars i don't know that just, would wouldn't yeah. that be uh, like other kids and buses I don't think yeah, that kind of separates people i see what you're saying i, I love how uh, you also have to spread them out so far Mm -hmm. on the bus but the oh, type right. of ride it doesn't necessarily have to apply to a car i mean a stroller mm -hmm. a bike, some kid in a scooter and they just decorate it just yeah. gotta be with, you know cars and strollers and bikes and make mm -hmm. sure there's no one you know hits one another but. physically distance or something and different physically. the strollers go last go or whatever safest we'll talk to the police we'll let them decide how they, we should do it yeah, yeah. i think that's and yeah the trick my ride is anything that you how you get around bike stroller i like that you yeah. can also have the parades on different routes like you yeah. could have a bike parade down one section a car parade through the center of town like different ways where people would be encouraged to go downtown for a longer period of time and maybe grab some lunch or something mm -hmm. but well it's just like a regular parade you got the marching bands go at one point you got the you know so you can have the cars go first at like say one o'clock and then the strollers oh. and bikes can go at two o'clock or you know so it's ongoing but it's different things for different people mm -hmm. 
we just have to be careful with the, the gathering. Again, we'll have to, we'll work with the, 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 the public health department and um, the police and, you know, make sure we stay within the, the guidelines. Meg. So my question about this is, I'm wondering like, okay, so if we do a car parade or anything, are there supposed to be people at the side of the roads cheering or like, is it just, a parade of cars yeah. all honking their horns. And Honestly, stuff. it's probably going to be just a parade of cars all <laughs> honking their horns, going by the different businesses. Hopefully, the business owners will be out waving and yeah. the seniors' parade. Though there was some decent attendance for the class of 2020 parade. Oh, that's right. So, and that was socially distanced, kind of at the height of like everyone's mm -hmm. fear yeah. of the pandemic. So. They had a long enough route that people could really stretch out mm. kind of thing. And they were in cars, correct? Or They were in cars, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm yeah. just, I guess, I'm also wondering, like, if, if we're going to have families decorate their cars or their bikes or their strollers or, you know, whatever, skateboards, I don't know, they can, anything, um, who would actually be watching this? Like, if, are the kids watch I don't know. Like, I'm just trying to picture. Are the kids in Nikki's the cars? Idea, Nikki's <laughs> idea is that they come to, let's say, the they finish up at the high school. I'm just throwing this out. I don't know for sure. And then there's sort of a, a recognition, if you will, participation award, and have you, and then maybe trick or treat bags for each kid. Yeah. yeah think, like this Facebook. is some fun to do. This is, you know, yeah, with the family. That's that's all. Yeah. Anything, anything. I mean, if, if, if word comes down that they can't trick or treat, I mean, how bad is that? It's poor kids. Yeah. No fun well, we for you. We had a Halloween storm. Yeah. Yeah. That, at least we, you we could make trick or snowmen. treat. <laughs> That's happened. That's true. All right. Any more on that? I was, I was mentioning Shape you could do a, a Facebook Live. Uh, mm -hmm. the, like at the end of the parade so if people don't feel comfortable I don't know venturing out they can still see it you know the cars at the end of the parade come by oh that'd be cool do it live and then we could record it too so that's awesome yep all right love these great ideas thanks all right let's move on um let's see Nikki's still going to <laughs> When, in her spare time, she's going to be doing, um, let's see, uh, a program called um, Family S'mores. I'm not exactly sure what that is, and I still need some more details of what that is, but it's going to happen on site at some of the housing areas uh, in a socially distant, distant way. Um, and also, she's continuing to provide nature kits at Puffer's Pond and Groff Park. Uh, and offering corresponding program online. So that is happening um, in terms of outreach right now. Although she's been very busy. I mean, her schedule has been eaten up a lot with working at Puffer's Pond and at Cherry Hill. So she has limited time right now. So once that finishes up, um, we'll be doing more outreach. Uh, talked about strategic planning so much. So yeah, all the staff just continue to work uh, shifts at Puffer's Pond, um, the Senior Center Meal Deliveries. Uh, Grace has been doing that. Um, we all worked, um, they all worked um, as poll workers. I kind of went or did my rounds to the various uh, precincts. So we were very involved in the election um, at the polls, and we'll do that in, as well in, um, in November. So, um, all right, I think that's all I have. Any comments, quite, any more questions? I have a question. Just, Sarah, please. Oh, sorry, go ahead, someone else. Oh, I was just gonna say, how long, um, how long do you anticipate people being at Puffers for? Right. You know, I think it's just about the same as the pools till about the 27th. And, and that's weather dependent. We've had days where we didn't right. go up because of the weather. Uh, this weekend looks cool, so I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not anticipating a lot of uh, crowds there. Last weekend was quite busy, though. Mm -hmm. And how about Cherry Hill? How long? I mean, I Cherry assume Hill's, 
Yeah, Cherry Hill will stay open till November 15th, 14th in there. Again, weather dependent. Usually mid, we are there till uh, mid-November. <clears throat> Any other questions? Comments? Great work. <laughs> okay. Well, this is good. So we'll, we'll meet. I'm excited about getting started on starting to implement some of the the goals in the strategic plan. So we'll get that going. We're going to have a busy fall and with the name change, it's going to be a, an exciting time for us. Um, uh, so on that note, there aren't any more questions or comments. Um, we need to think about our next meeting date, our regular, this is in addition to our meeting with the staff. Sarah, I'm sorry. I I'm sorry, I should have, this should have occurred to me earlier during the CPA thing. <laughs> um, the, the request for proposals, I think is, we hope that it'll go out next week sometime. And I think uh, it's the general hope that, that the committees have looked at them ahead of time right, that even if staff are developing them, that, that, that they do come to CPA with the backing of the, like, the commission, if there's, if there's going to be a recreational, recreation what? project proposed that. Yeah, I so haven't just, heard, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to wrap, but um, right now, I, I don't, I, I had asked Dave if we don't really have much, but I'm trying to figure that out, so do you know when those are due so we can time this? I mean, we could do that as part of our meeting um, on the 24th. Sorry, did I miss? We have a new commission meeting date? No, no. The, the 24th, when we meet with the staff, we could do a, you know, oh. use maybe part of that, uh, the very beginning of that meeting to talk about potential proposals. Would that well, work? Well, I, th I think the... Um, what do they do? I think the schedule will, will be going up. If it isn't already on the website, because I don't know if it's if it's actually the committee that has to approve it or it just comes out of the accounting department. I really don't know. I mean, I've seen a draft schedule, but I don't know if it's. And I can tell if I can find it, I'll tell you what the draft dates are, but I don't know when it moves from draft to. Yeah, I think we've got a little bit of time. Um, okay. It wouldn't be this quick. so. Why don't we do that? We'll add that right. to our, uh, uh, maybe just devote 15, 20 minutes uh, to our meeting on the 24th to discuss CPAC. Is that okay? okay? If there's anything you, yeah. And then if we make a, you know, if we, we have, and then we'll do, uh, I, hopefully we'll have more of an update to you as if there is anything for recreation. I kind of feel right now we have our, our hands full <laughs> with other projects that we're trying to complete. So, yes. um, uh, you know, the only one that might be the outlier is is Mill River again if we uh, decide to apply for a park grant. Uh, mm -hmm. We were turned down two years ago. I'm not sure if there's um, a lot of energy about reapplying this year. So I uh, let me, uh, Dave's on vacation, but I think he had mentioned uh, in an email that I was just looking at before we started that he, he wanted to, to get together and discuss um, potential projects but oh, okay well he should he should know he should know <laughs> when they're due <laughs> yeah so yeah okay. so that, that's the only one I can think of um uh, just to, and while I'm I'm talking about that the um the basketball court I've been assured by Guilford that that work is going to start this fall on uh, the basketball court at Mill River so that will be the first phase of that is moving that to the west and enlarging it um, to include a children's uh section of court at um, Mill River River and re renovating that that resource. Okay. See, Any um, another kind of random question. Do you have or is there a timeline for Kendrick Park at all? Is there a timeline? Yeah. Um, let me get that to you. I don't have it handy. I know there's been some activity. I was on vacation and there was there was a meeting that I wasn't able to attend. So um, I know there were deadlines and some some things that had to be submitted, and I'm sure that all is happening. As you can see, there's mm -hmm. activity at Kendrick Park now yeah. in terms of putting in that asphalt pathway. Um, but I can 
I can provide that to you at the next commission meeting. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Anything else? All right, then uh, next commission meeting. Let's see. September, October. So the next, if we were talking about a month away, it would be the second Wednesday in October the 14th. I can do that. That works for me. That works for everyone? October 14th at six o'clock. Okay, next. Excellent. All right, Meg, do you have anything else to add? Um, I think that's all. I think that's it. Wow. That got it done in <laughs> under an hour. Excellent. All right. So we'll see everybody on the 24th. I will try to get you at least some preliminary information before then and keep you updated as to what's happening with child care. Yes, Sarah. Yeah. Uh, unless I missed it, you didn't send out your report in writing. Is that the case? If you know, that was an oversight on my part. I'm sorry. Let you me just append, append it to the minutes is fine. Okay. Just append it to the minutes. Okay. Right. It's, it's actually meeting. included in the minutes, but if yeah. you want, I can send it to you. What? I'll send it to you anyways. Yeah. Okay. All right. Excellent. Well, thank you, everyone. All right. Thank you. Have a great evening, and uh, we'll see you soon. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye.